I've had to fight my natural tendencies in order to declutter my life. Oh, so you're like a hoarder. No, I'm not a hoarder, but I'm definitely a stuffed person. I grew up collecting things. Oh, is that why you have all these keychains? Well, yeah. And these pins and coins? Yeah. And these randomly branded stickers? Yeah. But and these hats? Yes, okay, I have a lot of stuff, all right? I still have a lot of stuff. The great thing about Marie Kondo is that it's not necessarily about minimalism, it's about what brings you joy. And I like those keychains. A year ago, I read The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. Well, I listened to it, same difference. And in my opinion, that book was indeed life-changing, like real talk. People often simplify it down to that one question of what sparks joy, but it actually spoke to things that were way more profound and fundamentally shifted my relationship to objects that I own and to things that take up space in my life. And I'm talking about decluttering my entire life, not just the physical stuff. So let's go through the KonMari mindset and how it can lead to decluttering on a larger scale in a much more holistic way. It's your girl Asante helping you move consciously and creatively through life, so let's go. There are some things that I've had for several years that I still like and use, and then there's all the other stuff. Piles and piles of it. In the two years after I graduated from college, I moved 12 times. If you're looking for moving tips, I've got plenty and I made a whole other video about that. But just having to heft all of my things around made it clear that I was living with more than what I needed. I had a friend help me with this last move and when she brought up the first few things to put into the hallway closet, she opened the door and said, oh, you've already moved in. I had brought over a whole other round of stuff the night before. And even though it was my shortest distance move, only a couple blocks, it took me two full days to complete with four extra sets of hands. It was really to the point where I was just like, this, this is just, this is too much. I needed to cut down. And I had brought over things that were at my parents' house, clothing that I wore in high school, old documents and papers from college. I'm someone who, when my room is a mess, my life is a mess, and vice versa, so the clutter was stressing me out. And that's when I read Marie Kondo's seminal masterpiece. It made me realize some of my own thought patterns I didn't even know I had around the things that I owned. More than just finding what sparks joy, the book is really about releasing the emotional baggage around stuff and only holding on to things that serve you physically and lift you emotionally. I find that I'm always in the process of emotionally letting go of things. So even though Kanmari said, Kanmari? Kanmari? I might have been saying it wrong this whole time. No. Even though Kanmari says you should only need to tidy one time, I go through my wardrobe periodically to find those things that I'm no longer emotionally attached to. Things that have been hanging out in the back of my drawer unloved. Like this puffy hot pink skirt. I mean, it's a great piece, but I, I don't wear this. I'm a Girl Scout. Once a Girl Scout, always a Girl Scout. And that whole be prepared mentality of like, you never know what you're going to need. Like, that's a good thing. Keep it, save it, hold on to it. That was my mentality. But the KonMari method says that things have a specific role in your life. And once they've served that role, you should thank them and release them. Thank you, super fancy over the top blouse. I'd been holding on to things that I bought but never wore because it was new or because it was an objectively nice item. Conmarie would say that the role of that item was to show you what you like but shouldn't buy or what you used to like but don't like anymore. So it served its purpose in your life. Clean it out. I'd been holding on to things because I thought I might need them someday in the future. Conmarie says if you need it in the future, if you actually need it, You'll go get it in the future. You don't need it now, so clean it out. Get rid of it, girl. I'd kept things that I've been given as gifts from people that I love. Conmarie says that the role of that item is for the person to be able to express their love and for you to be able to receive it. So once you received it, it's done its role in your life. You can let it go. And the person probably won't know if you kept it anyway. It'll be our little secret. Release any sense of guilt or feeling of obligation about an item. Marie Kondo's general rule for going through papers is to throw them out. Ooh. Because how often do you actually go back through your papers, especially things like old notes and materials from seminars? If the lesson didn't sink in from the seminar, then it probably wasn't that good of a seminar or it wasn't actually applicable. If the seminar was really impactful, you should have started applying those lessons immediately. The tea was hot. No, I felt called out. I felt called out. I thought I was the one doing the reading, but she actually read me during this book, yeah. She also has a great section on the mentality behind sentimental items so I would definitely give The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up a read. She doesn't hold back. In the book, it says that tidying is at least a six month process and I've certainly found that it takes a while. Over the past year, I've gotten rid of bags and bags of clothes. The bottom line is that there's no benefit from being surrounded by things that you don't care about, don't use, or don't even notice because they're buried in the back of your closet. Even those things that seem nice and well-intentioned. But along with my clothing and physical items, I looked at my digital presence, I looked at my job, who I hang out with, where I live, how I spend my time, I laid everything out before me, held each aspect in my hands, and asked those same Marie Kondo questions. Does this spark joy? Am I only doing this because I feel an emotional obligation? Is this an outdated habit that no longer applies? Is this just for the sake of nostalgia? Has this already served its role in my life? 
when I'm going through clothing, there are some other questions that help me to evaluate what to discard. Like, would I buy it today if I didn't already own it? Would I have gone looking for this item? Would I have missed it if I hadn't come across it? And when I'm looking at how I'm spending my time and energy, I'm thinking, do I feel good when I'm doing this activity every week? Would I go out of my way to do this activity if it wasn't already a part of my routine? Would I pay for the opportunity to be able to do this thing, see this person, go to this event? Am I doing this just out of social pressure or because of some unwritten expectation or obligation? Would I have gone looking for this event? Would I have regretted not doing that thing? Would I have actively sought out that old friend if they hadn't just randomly hit me up? Right now, the things that bring me joy in my personal life are making my art, which right now is these YouTube videos, showing up for my online community and making an impact in their lives and maintaining meaningful in-person relationships. So as far as my personal life, everything else gets decluttered. I'm based in Washington, DC, and there are a ton of networking events, events thrown by other social media mavens and influencers, plenty of mixers for young professionals. And when I first moved here after college, I felt like I had to be a part of that scene, you know, early 20s, out on the town. Until I realized that when I went to these events, most of the connections that I made didn't last or people didn't follow up. I already had a couple friends that I could rely on. I already had a job. I already had a hustle that I really should have been spending my time on. I was really only social networking IRL because I thought I was supposed to. So I decluttered events out of my schedule. I used to commute over an hour to work on public transportation. So there was lots of jostling, crowded platforms and having to stay alert enough so that I couldn't actually focus on getting something done during my commute. That sure as heck wasn't bringing me joy. So I decluttered it. I moved a lot closer to my job. I had roommates who were catty and immature decluttered them, move departments again. And something as big as moving house can seem like a daunting task, just like opening your closet and seeing it filled to the brim can be overwhelming. But in both cases, the freedom, mental clarity, and peace that I feel now after having gotten rid of that junk is so worth it. While yeah, I wound up moving 12 times, I'm now at a place where I feel safe and at home, and that feeling is priceless. I've also decluttered on a smaller life scale. I've decluttered most television out of my life. I've curated my digital life. I'm not really on Facebook anymore. Instead Instead of feeling pressure to be on every social platform everywhere, I focused on Twitter and Instagram, especially Instagram stories. You should go follow me at Asante B. We have a lot of fun on there, I'm just saying. But I've really benefited from taking a step back and looking at my physical surroundings, at my activities, at how I spend my time, and asking myself, what do I want in my life in this moment? What right now brings me joy? Like I said, I'm not a minimalist in my wardrobe or in my life. I try and pack in as much as possible. And there are a lot of things in my life that I've had for a while that are still valuable that I don't wanna let go of. Like this dress. Guess how long I've had this dress for? Just take, just take a gander, just take a wild, just take a wild guess. I've had this dress since I was in ninth grade. Can you believe that was my Facebook profile picture in ninth grade? <laughs> I deleted that Facebook. But my coworkers would recognize this dress. I still wear it. Despite the kind of awkward mid boob swoop, it still looks good on me. I still like it. And the material doesn't wrinkle, so it packs incredibly well for business trips. Shout out to polyester. But perhaps there are things in your life that haven't aged quite as seamlessly. Get it? Are there things that you've been holding on to because of custom or to keep up with expectations? Maybe because of peer pressure or because you're simply used to doing them. Maybe your closet or your schedule or both could use a bit of connery decluttering. This video is a part of my personal development series where I'm encouraging you to get better with me by practicing healthy habits. And this organization habit is to be picky about what you take into your life, what you buy, what you keep, what you spend time on. You gotta do what you gotta do, but I've made the habit to, whenever possible, only invest in things that bring me joy. If this YouTube channel brings you joy, then you should like this video and subscribe. Lightly tickle that notification bell so you know when new videos are up. You know, everyone's out here trying to smash, but I'm like, a light tickle is fine. You know, just, just a gentle caress of that notification bell is all I need. And if you want an additional video each month with my personal life lessons and a bit more detail than I go into here, then you should join my Brilliant Beans Club. And if this channel brings you so much joy that you want to invest in its future and help me to continue making videos, then you can support by joining my Patreon. Patreon community. My patrons are splendiferous and shout out to my newest patron Mimi Marie. Mimi, thank you so much for your support. As always, remember to live spiritedly and think creatively and I will see you next time. <laughs> All right, we're done.